Greenland is the largest island on our planet. What do we know about it to begin with? This is one of the Vikings' two blunders. Only ferocious bearded men could call the land full of greenery Iceland and the kingdom of ice Greenland. Yes, and only the strongest can survive here. The night on the island lasts from mid-November to early December, about 80 days. 110 more days is a polar day. And only 175 days the daredevils have to admire the sun and the moon in the usual mode. Perhaps this is why the number of suicides here is out of control. However, let's not talk about sad things. Greenland is also famous for its fisheries. The fishing industry accounts for nine-tenths of total exports. But there are enough fish in the world. Why is it now that there has been such a surge in interest in the kingdom of cold? Why could global warming become super profitable for Greenland? As of the end of the last century, the Greenland ice sheet, which occupies about 80% of the territory, made almost any geological survey simply impossible. For instance, in 1990 to 1992, as part of the Greenland Ice Core project, a well 3,029 meters deep was drilled through the ice and could only reach the base of the ice sheet itself. It also was found out that its average thickness is 1,500 meters. This sounds all the more grandiose since at that time the process of global warming had been underway for more than 100 years, undermining the gigantic ice of the north. As a result, the centuries-old ice accumulations of the shield were estimated by experts at 2.85 million cubic kilometers. To make it easier for you to imagine the scale, let us clarify that if all this ice melted, the level of the world ocean would increase not by millimeters, which world-famous scientists scare us with, but by 7 meters, which would threaten to flood many island countries of the third world. This threat became even more significant in 2019 when the Siberian fires greatly accelerated the melting process. As a result, the issue of countering the New World flood had to be addressed. Since 2003, the Greenland ice cover has added nothing less than 3.5 trillion tons of water to the world ocean. In all the world organizations to which this concerns, in particular the UN, the traditional question is asked, what to do? And the only member of these communities that does not try to speed up the solution of the issue itself is Greenland. So, what do we see? An insane and short-sighted move by the government of autonomy or a subtle strategic game? Global warming has made it possible to expose entire areas for geological research. Of course, scientists expected certain discoveries as well as findings, but not a single analyst could predict such amazing success. Think about the south of Greenland, the small town of Narsag. In size and population, it falls short even of what we would call a town or village. Only about 1,200 people live in classic A-shaped houses. Now, world leaders' plans for this place may lead to major international scandals. The rocks around it, according to preliminary estimates, contain up to a quarter of the world's reserves of rare earth metals. Elements such as terbium, cerium, lanthanum, and praseodymium are the platinum of our century, which is used in literally all modern high technologies from standard smartphones to nuclear reactors. Whoever owns these metals also owns the world of information technology. Accordingly, whoever provides the resource itself and allows it to be mined will receive a huge profit. Almost 40 million tons of rare earth metals lie and wait in the wings in Greenland. This is a grandiose number, and given that the total mass of raw materials in the world, excluding Greenland, is only 120 million tons, then the calculation of the future earnings of the Danish autonomy makes even the most inveterate skeptics wonder. In the past, the United States had the title of the leading producer of these resources, but the main rival, the Celestial Empire, has long surpassed them, and now the States is dependent on China in this matter. That is why, probably, the outwardly crazy idea of buying the entire island was put forward by Donald Trump during his presidency. As for the Danish kingdom, a giant ice block is just a burden, an extra waste of budget money. It would, however, come in handy for America, which had a military base there since the Cold War. Expectedly, he was refused, because this is not just a huge territory, but also home to 60,000 people. What is more, the DJT argument about the parasitism of Greenland on Danish subsidies also turned out to be erroneous. Yes, Greenland receives $640 million of subsidies per year 
But this does not even cover 0.5% of budget expenditures, because the island lives on an average of $170 billion a year. Nevertheless, increased attention to the island was ensured, because the business shark's flair has never let him down. The mindset of a hereditary developer and the desire to go down in history along with Johnson and Jefferson, thanks to which Alaska and Louisiana were added to the list of states, also played an important role. So, the Trump administration was able to substantiate the insane proposal, after which it became finally clear that the 45th president had not gone crazy, but was playing a rough but well-defined game, albeit outwardly. The Chinese have already beaten their competitors on one of the corners of this economic racing track. 12% of the shares of another field, called Kvan Field, are already in their hands, although the Australians still own the main stake. The chance of China winning this race is very high. Only this country has the sufficient production capacity while also being able to meet increased demand. With an annual demand for rare earth materials of 200,000 tons per year, a few mines can give their owners a virtual monopoly on the extraction and sale of valuable cargo. European markets at this stage are unable to compete with the Middle Empire, but America will become a serious opponent in this game because, despite the large external debt, it still holds in its hands the most reliable investment in the world, the dollar. At the same time, the Greenlanders are quite satisfied with such competition between the powers that be. Prices for rare earth materials have already jumped by an average of 20% due to the undeclared economic war, and this is just the beginning. Despite the official stance against the sale of territories in such volumes, the Greenlandic government is simply happy to see that increased attention is being paid to the island. Researchers are discovering new deposits that even the locals were unaware of. Iron, zinc, precious stones, all of these lie in wait for the most purposeful player on the world market to come and take the well-deserved prize. Many are surprised. After all, all these, including rare earth metals, are also found in other countries. So why is everyone looking at the cold Greenland fjords? Throughout the ages, merchants have been looking not only for the goods themselves, but also for a way to provide the most comfortable and affordable logistics. The same thing happened with Greenland, which in the 16th to 19th centuries became one of the key points of the promising Northwest Passage. Previously, this route was considered insufficiently promising. The Northern Sea Route met the majority of the needs of local trade and economic routes, for lack of a better one, because not all countries could afford icebreakers at the time. The reason for the undying interest in this sea route was the difference in depth between the Panama Canal and the Northwest Passage. The second can allow much larger ships through. These assumptions were repeatedly proven in practice. The first heavy supertanker, SSS Manhattan, with a displacement of 115,000 tons and a capacity of 43,000 horsepower, passed the new route without any problems, being at that time the largest ship of the US civilian fleet. And in 1985, the US Coast Guard icebreaker, Polar Sea, passed through the Northwest Passage from the American Air Base in Toul, Greenland, to the home port in Seattle. Dimensioned global warming has made its own adjustments, wiping out the need for icebreakers and introducing new players to the world trade arena, such as Canada. Now, a full-fledged port appears on this route, which in terms of shipping can offer convenient logistics at the most affordable price, as the Greenland authorities also declare. The autonomy of the island allows a decision to be made, even without the consent of Denmark, which owns these lands, but there are no objections from the ruling state regarding the accelerated development of Greenland, and the leadership of the kingdom directly declares that Greenland will never belong to anyone other than Greenland. So, what's the conclusion? Greenland's economy is simply doomed to succeed. Global warming is gaining momentum, and the natural consequence of this will be fabulous profits. Greenland, and together with it, Denmark as a metropolis, has only to choose the most profitable option, and as we see, there is plenty to choose from. Moreover, such actions of the ex-kingdom of ice and snow can shift the vectors of political influence at the level of superpowers because China is threatened not only by fierce competition but also by direct dependence on the United States, the same as it exists now, only in reverse. Do you think Greenland will soon become a competitor to Silicon Valley and the most prestigious place to live?